Welcome back to another episode of Harmonious at Lunch, the show that fuels your business success. I'm Brandon Gano, your host and guide through the world of harmonious business growth. Today, we're unlocking powerful strategies with industry experts to help your business thrive. If you're a business owner, entrepreneur, or executive, you are in the right place. Join me and our incredible guest today on the journey to clarity, growth, and success. It is time to revolutionize your approach to business. Let's dive in with another episode of Harmonious at Lunch. Welcome back to some more bite-sized business advice, and we are talking about high performance today. Uh, I think it's a topic that's pretty cool, and we're going to unpack it. Typically, when you hear high performance, it's about like cars, um, but I don't think we're talking about that. I think we're talking about human beings today, which is awesome. Executives, leaders, CEOs, you need to be high performance if you want, you want to run a high performance business. But I also think you need to trickle that down to your staff and make it as part of your culture. So uh, before we go any further, let me welcome my guest on Carlo Taormina. Welcome to the show. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Brandon, for having me, man. I'm excited. So let me let me do this. Let's start here because I defined high performance as a uh, car, which I don't think it is. What, what does high performance mean for you? For me, high performance means how can I show up as the best version of myself every single day, whether it be personally or professionally, is how can I become the best version? How can I perform like a high performance car every single day, right? That's what I like to think about it. Yeah, and I think... A lot of people just innately want that. They like they want to be the best version of themselves, but things come up, right? Life happens. You you get down. You get a, a email that rubs you the wrong way, and you just you get off your game for a little bit, however long that takes. So, what what is it? What do you find that gets people off of that high performance mindset? And really, not not even just the mindset, but they get out of the practice of high performance. Personally, for me, what I see, what the difference is between people who are those that are high performers and those who aren't is simply just doing the work required to become such, right? So something that I love and hold dear is like one of those factoids that I will always remember, and it's always something that's stuck with me, is that humans will always take the path of least resistance because Mm -hmm. sometimes things are hard right? So what would the average person rather want to do? Do something that's easier, that doesn't require a lot of work, or that takes time, work, dedication, perseverance. Obviously, 90% of people are going to be the average person and go the easy way out. If you want to become a high-performance individual, you need to do certain things that make you a high-performance individual, right? You need to take care of yourself physically and mentally. So I think that's one of the main reasons why people are not quote unquote high performers is because they'd rather take the easy way out instead of doing what's required of them. What prevents that though? Like what, cause I think we can identify what those things are in our lives pretty simply. Mm-hmm. What is it that comes up to prevent us from going the hard route? Or at least I hate to even say hard. Cause a lot of times it's just, they're the same. One just may require more discipline or more focus. So what, what is it that holds us back? One thing I can think of, one thing that can hold people back is that their why is not strong enough. So they're not compelled to do anything. Because a lot of people, when they say, oh, I need to be a high performance person, I need to push myself. A lot of times, it's not about pushing yourself. It's about being pulled towards something, right? So if you want to become this high performance person, like everyone wants to make a million bucks, everyone. But are you going to do what's required to make a million bucks? No. But if you feel pulled enough to do what's why it means so much to you to make the million bucks, you're probably going to do it. So if you ask somebody why they want to lose 25 pounds, everyone's going to say, oh, I just want to be healthy. But when they do that, they end up falling off the wagon. But if they have something that is so compelling that is pulling them toward that end goal, then they're not going to fall off. So I think a big reason why people fall off is that they don't have a structural, they don't have a sound foundation to go off of. They don't have something pulling them towards that destination. Right. So I think that's a big reason why people just kind of end up failing right off the gate. That's interesting because that's when we consult with businesses, we always start there with with the why in the business context is mission, your business's mission. Um, And we find that companies just they don't have it, whether they they don't have it or it just hasn't been looked at in 10 years is really the same thing. Do you find that with, you know, individuals, too, that because I think we we all had a why 
in the beginning of starting our businesses, but 10, 15, 20 years in, if you don't make a new one or you don't think about it, it's just, it's not going to pull you forward anymore. So, um, I mean, is that, is that something that tends to happen with people? Yeah, absolutely. In fact, I remember a conversation specifically I had with somebody. I actually met him at a networking event and we were just talking, chit chatting, and he has his own insurance business. And you can tell who he was when he wanted to start it as opposed to where he is now. Right. And he's in a much better place now after, you know, we talked a little bit, but he was just saying like, he's like, yeah, I'm just in the mundane routine things I'm doing every single day. Right. Oh, now the market sucks. And now it's making me feel worse and less fulfilled about what I'm doing. And there was nothing really pulling him toward a new direction, a new goal, anything like that. So he was not really passionate about what he was doing in the first place. But not only that, of what he was doing currently, I think it's fair to say that he wasn't being the best version of himself. And that was translated to his employees, to his staff, to the clients he was helping, right? So I think we all need that foundation. We all need that compelling why. And we need to remind ourselves constantly because that's what's going to keep us going, keep us moving forward. So when you start to work with your clients, I assume that's one of the first things you look at, if not the first. So yeah. how do you go through identifying, first and foremost, is it clear enough? Is it compelling? Can we stick with it? Mm -hmm. Or do we have to rebuild? And if you do have to rebuild, like what's that process to actually cultivate somebody's compelling why? Yeah, so honestly, it's all in the power of questions because the quality of questions you ask control the quality of your life, quality of your business, quality of your corporation, anything, right? So when I, when I ask someone, okay, let's say, for example, we're speaking to this guy again, and he wants to 10x his revenue in the insurance uh, business. Okay, well, why is that so important? Oh, because, you know, uh, last year we 50x'd it, right? And Or 5x'd it, we, we want to go higher. Okay, that's all great and dandy. You know, I'm all for achieving higher results. But what's the point of it? Like, what is going to get you out of bed to do it? And then the more I ask why... And the reasons why and the reasons behind it, you're going to find out that there's honestly maybe some personal reasons in there that they may not even know. And when it's a personal reason, that's something that, some, excuse me, that's something that's very compelling. That's something that's very attractive, intriguing, that will pull you towards anything, right? So when I'm speaking to this person, I'm like, okay, well, why do you want to 10x your business? Eventually, we kind of, asked more questions and we kind of went down to the root and it was all from family. I want to be able to support my family. I want to be able to help my family. College is coming up. I have two, three kids. College ain't cheap, right? So I want to help and not have money on the top of my mind. I want to be able to be secure so that, that way I don't have to worry about that. And then once we kind of boiled it down, that's why he wanted to take his business from 5X to 10X, right? So a lot of times in companies, businesses, whoever, when you really boil it down, when you really get down to the root of what makes you want to do this certain thing, if it's personal, a lot of times it is, but even if it's not, if it's not super compelling, you will not. Oh, okay, my camera went away. Sorry about that. Yeah, I don't know why my camera went away. But if you don't have a compelling why, if you don't have a strong foundation, your house is going to fall. That's just, you know, I'm not a contractor. But that's kind of common sense to me, right? So ask yourself in your business, why am I doing what I'm doing? Why do I want to grow? What's the point of it? And if it, that why you currently have doesn't pull you, there may be a chance that you don't succeed. Or even if you do succeed, it may not fulfill you the way you thought it would. Mm. Is that kind of the the missing link between the when we talk about high performers, you know, doing what's required, the discipline, the hard work, and taking the easy way out? Is that it? Does it just become a non negotiable at that point that they just do whatever it takes once they're connected to that why? Or is there something else involved with making that shift from taking the easy road to taking the discipline road? Yeah, I mean, I like to think every company, everybody is different, right? But the main thing if you want to become that high performing individual is have a foundation. Like you got to find out why, right? I mean, there, there are other things that you can add to the puzzle. Cause again, at the end of the day, this is all a puzzle. 
and we're just adding little pieces in. But the foundations, like the corners, right? Once you get that fresh, that structure, that frame, you know what you're working off of. But that's like the main thing you need, the first thing you need. Yeah, it makes complete sense. And it's it's one of those things where you hear it so many times, you almost tend to, you, you start to discount it, right? Yep. And, and people just don't do the work, but uh, it really is important both in your personal life and also we know from doing it for businesses, it's it's very important for your business too. So in building a culture of high performers, it's got to start with the leader. Uh, I, it just, you can't tell people to do what you're not willing to model. So once you've, let's assume that the leader is optimized. Okay. How do you start to bring this down to your team, your staff, your employees? Because, you know, you could, you could just say, I need you guys to be higher performers. That sounds a little bit insulting because some people may, may be like, what are you talking about? I'm already doing everything I can. I'm busting my butt for this company. Mm -hmm. So how do you start to integrate this into your culture? Well, I think honestly, the first thing is by doing, I don't say by doing nothing, but I am a firm believer that you are the average person you hang out with, right? So if you are the leader of your company and you're surrounding yourself with maybe those individuals who may not see what you see in your company, they may not be the best fit. But if you see the potential in these people, if you get definitely realize that, okay, these individuals are going to help me take my company to the next level. It's just, I need them to understand what it's going to take, what we need to do. If you are incorporating these different behaviors, these different patterns, these different thought processes, that's going to rub off on your staff. That's going to rub off on your employees. And they're going to take notice and say, Hey, Brandon over here, you know, our leader is doing all these additional steps. That's going to rub off naturally. Right now, uh, also like everyone can relate to this is, you know, our first job, our second job when we were kids, teenagers, when the manager wasn't around, we may have slacked every once in a while. Right. Because the manager's not around. But when that manager shows his face, you're like scrubbing the freaking ceilings. If you're working in like <laughs> McDonald's or something like, you, like you're going above and beyond. Imagine if you were the leader and you're around what are the odds that your team is going to go above and beyond, right? And even if you're not around, if you have like your CEO, your CF, like whoever, your assistant manager, whatever the name you give them, if they are a carbon copy of you and understand your morals, your values, and why you're doing what you're doing, and they have the exact same mannerisms, behaviors, mindset, thought processes, they're going to be exactly like you and you're not even going to be in the office. But everyone is going to, a sense have this behavior rubbed off from you, from your assistant manager, right? And they're going to go above and beyond regardless. So I think it's a natural process, but you have to always maintain that those standards, right? I remember when I used to have this job, like one of the words, it was one word that I kept hearing over and over again. And that word was standards. And I like, it hit me because I got it. I understood it. There are other people who would not be at that same level, but when I heard the word standards and I saw this person going above and beyond, I would do the same thing, regardless if he was there or not there. So I think it is a natural process that happens if you become it and you're surrounding yourself with people and then that's rubbing off on your employees, they're going to do it. So that's just my two cents. I think it's like the first step of it is just natural. Yeah, that makes sense. But then the, the reinforcing and you know, that's, that's, I guess, where it becomes tough because some people will self-regulate and, and average out, like you said, to your behavior. Mm -hmm. What do you do with the people who don't? <laughs> and they, they kind of stay where they are, right? Because then at that point, they become, they become an anchor almost if they're not willing to, and maybe they don't see it. Like, let's give them the benefit of the doubt and, and not just go right to firing them. But do you have a conversation? Do you start to coach them through this them, themselves? Um, what does that process look like? Yeah. I feel like everybody can be taught. Everybody can be coached. Everybody can learn a new skill. Anything you want to teach them, they can learn. The question is if they're willing to learn, mm. if they're willing to accept the information. Because I'm not one to say, okay, you're not, you're not, you don't get it, you're fired, you're out. That's not my style. Like if I were running a company, like that's just not how I think and behave. I'm going to teach you, but do you want to be taught? Do you, do you like it here? Do you want to be here? Right. 
If you don't want to be here, that's totally cool. Let me know so we can fill in the spot. But when it comes to those people who aren't performing the way you want to perform, but you know they want to be there, okay, have a little session with them. Just ask them questions. You know, Teach them what you want them to learn. And eventually you're going you're gonna to start to see them progress. But if you just see this person constantly declining or constantly stagnating and they're not showing any form of improvement, and it's been one, two, three weeks, four weeks since you last spoke with them, it's been a month, two months, okay, you can kind of get the gist that this person, this person may not be committing the way you want them to commit. Maybe they're just not meant for your company. And that's fine. That happens every single day. One of the best quotes I love from Gary V when it comes to like management, when it comes to employees is when you hire somebody, that it, it is a guessing game. You don't know if this person is going to be great. A resume is just a piece of paper that anyone could have typed up, right? It doesn't matter. But <laughs> we got a visitor. We're going to have to edit this episode. Sure. I'm almost done, okay? I need you to go out there until we're done with the episode. Come on. Here, let me pause it so we're... Yeah, so one of the best, my favorite lines from Gary Vee, right, when he is talking about management, when he's talking about employees, hiring, firing, all that, all that stuff, is when he said, when you hire somebody, you're just guessing, right? You don't know if this person is a million bucks. You don't know if this resume is legit. You don't know if this person is, you know, your ideal candidate. You only learn from this person's performance, right? But then when it comes to firing this person, okay, you know, this person's not, this employee is not up to par. This, this is not a good fit. That's perfectly fine. You're going to have those people like that. That's okay. But I would rather have somebody who wants to learn, right? And if this person, employee is willing to learn and adapt my leadership style, the philosophy on what it takes for this company to be a high performance company to reach those benchmarks, I will bring this poor person on board. Let's teach him or her. But if they're unwilling to learn and they're not showing any proof of improvement or growth, then sorry, it's just not a good fit. And we move on. Yeah. Yeah, it makes sense. And I, I like that. I've never heard that that quote from him, but it's uh, it's one of those things that you have to think about as you're growing your company, right? Like if, if you're going to build a culture of high performers, first of all, you have to model it yourself. Yeah. Second of all, you have to have people willing to do the work. Um, this has been a great conversation, Carlo. I appreciate it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and toss on the screen and put in the show notes down below. Um, best place to find you is on Instagram. Um, so people can jump on over there and follow you. But what I want to know too is, you know, in the context of this conversation, if someone wants to be a high performer, they want to build a culture of high performers and hire and develop mm -hmm. high performers in their team, what's, what's a question they should be asking themselves as far as, you know, making the first step on this journey that they can ask themselves until they get a powerful answer of how they should walk forward. Yeah. So it all starts with self, right? So let's say, for example, I have this company of 50 people, hundred people, and I want them to become high performers. And I want this company's culture to change. The first question I'm asking myself is what do I need to do myself to reflect what I want for this company? Cause it all starts with me, right? So what do I need to do with myself? And then when you ask that question, you're going to start to see, you're going to get four or five answers off the top of your head. Oh, I need to do this. I need to do more of this. I need to probably avoid doing that. And you're going to kind of get lost in it. You're going to be like in the, the flow state and you're going to see all these things that you know you need to do to become the best version of yourself and your company. So that way that can spread across your company. I love it. That's that's an amazing question. Uh, definitely go do that exercise. Ask yourself that question. Carlo, thank you so much for being here today. Hey, thank you, Brandon. I appreciate you. For those of you watching, listening, wherever you are, make sure you subscribe. We want to keep bringing these episodes to you every single day of the week. So you could be a high performer, you can grow your business. And ultimately, we want you to have a harmonious business and life. That's the whole goal. So we'll see you on the next episode of Harmonious at